My name is Abby. I'm deeply passionate about all things wild and have made it my mission to document many of the world's most stunning trails, be that through day hikes or multi-day long distance walking. Each route is totally unique. Some traverse exposed moorlands and rugged mountaintops, others pass through bustling market towns and historical cities. They follow world-renowned archaeological discoveries and travel through some of the most tranquil valleys and mystical forests accessible on foot. It's not surprising then that they attract walkers from all over the world, many seeking a challenge, others looking to break free from the monotony of everyday life and be inspired by nature. My reason for hiking though is one of discovery and awareness. Getting outside is now more important than ever before, with obesity rates maintaining record highs and mental health issues affecting over one in four individuals. There are incredible landscapes all around us, but so few of us dare to venture into such seemingly inhospitable lands for fear of failure or becoming lost. Well, I'm here to show you otherwise and inspire you to don your walking boots and spend more time in the wild for the benefit of mental and physical health. I've realised that sometimes you don't have to do something crazy or radical to change how you feel about your life. You just have to walk. I face my own trials with mental ill health, as no doubt you'll see throughout my travels, but alongside building a strong support network, getting outside and taking the time to reconnect with nature has helped me move further along the road of personal discovery. So, here's me inviting you to join me on my adventures as I explore this beautiful planet. There will be challenges along the way, and we're not guaranteed to succeed, but it takes a brave heart and a courageous soul to commit to the unknown. Now all you have to do is decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the official start of the Cotswold Way. So I'm here in Shipping Camden, just outside of the Market Hall, built in the early 1600s. This place is absolutely beautiful with the sort of honey coloured stone and just really old, beautiful buildings. I mean, I'm, I'm lost for words right now uh, because basically I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> uh, so we've just come out of lockdown here in the UK. We're sort of mid-July 2020 and things are changing on um, the other side of the sort of COVID-19 situation. As with many people, my entire year has been scuffered. All of my plans went out the window uh, as lockdown began. But uh, things are easing, as I just said, and I have ended up here in the Cotswold. Basically, it's a trail that's accessible to me. It's one that I can do under the current regulations. And so I jumped at the opportunity. Also, the weather is forecast to be good. So that always helps. And it was literally a couple of days ago that I decided to come here. And now that I'm here breathing in the air, I finally got my pack on for the first time this year. It feels so good. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so happy. As I say, lost for words. Anyway, you can see here, we've got this awesome um, circular stone marking the beginning with the National Trail acorn in the middle. So the Cotswold Way runs for 102 miles from here, Chipping Campton, right through the Cotswold AONB, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty, actually the, the largest in England. So it'd be nice to be able to check that out, uh, all the way down to the city of Bath. So definitely going to be a busy and bustling place to end after escaping to the rolling hills of the countryside. But I quite like that. It's uh, an air of anticipation as we journey through the um, through the Cotswolds basically you can see here as well we've got another little sign just the Cotswold way the beginning and the end and uh, I think it's about time to begin our journey are you ready let's get going <laughs> Chipping Campton was founded on the wool industry and then fast forward a few centuries it now brings us the arts and craft movement it was a bustling place filled with grand houses and the stunning St James Church my route went along the main high street, then out of town via St Catherine's Church. I am feeling on top of the world right now. Uh, it's quite warm, but we're making some progress out of Chipping Campton now. Really enjoyed looking around that place, but it's quite late. It's gone at 11 a.m. So I just got dropped off and normally I would have been walking for three or four, no, four or five hours. 
by now. Um, but it's okay. Uh, we've got about 16, 17 miles to cover to Hale's fruit farm. That's where I'm going to camp tonight. And I am going to camp the entire length of the trail. So home is on the back. And uh, let's just see what we can make with this. I'm going to try and keep my pace really steady. I'm working with a lot of injuries and three partially dislocated ribs uh, from something that happened a couple of months ago. So there's definitely going to be pain. It's going to be a mental test as much as physical this walk. Um, but I'm totally game for it and I'm just going to give it my best shot. Let's see what the trail has to offer. Reaching King Coon Lane, I had great views back over the town. So great, in fact, that I managed to miss my turning and ended up reaching Dover's Hill via an alternative path a little further on. Whew, I'm glad we didn't miss this bit. Insane. And here is the trick point. The summit offered superb views to the north and really gave me the feel that the trail had officially begun and that my adventure was now underway. Well, I have to admit, I'm pretty happy about these wide open spaces. I mean, this is awesome. Just with the wheat growing. Actually, I think that's barley. Uh, the views down over Chicken Campton. Obviously, we've got the road alongside right now, but it's pretty ace. Here, you see this sign? Broadway Tower. That's the uh, second highest point on the trail. That's where we're aiming for at the moment. Got this cool rock style. <laughs> Balance. Blah. Job done. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> Hey, check this out. We've officially got a dry stone wall. Now, I know it's just the wall, right? Check it out, right here. But these guys fascinate me. Um, basically, dry stone walls is sort of a traditional way of building walls that involves no mortar. So, literally just rocks. It takes a huge amount of skill to build one of these walls. And in fact, even the most skilled wall layer can only get about six to seven meters in in a day. Uh, sort of hard manual work this is and actually the Cotswold has over 4,000 miles of dry stone walls in total uh, throughout the AONB which is pretty astonishing. I just love them they're so characterful and they remind me of many adventures in the Yorkshire Dales but of course we're not in Yorkshire we are in the Cotswolds which is great. Uh, I can't wait to just follow lots of walls along this route they make me very happy indeed. <laughs> Pressing on, I passed through fields and alongside hedgerows, alive with wildlife. There were bees and butterflies and flowers of all kinds, and it was a really lovely time of year to be exploring the way. I just couldn't get enough of it, and it made for slow progress, but I was happy as ever. <laughs> here we go. So you can see we are here, having walked from Chip and Campton. So we're going to Hales, which is about here. And then the trail goes all the way, all the way, all the way to Bath. <laughs> Whoa. All right. That's a view and a half. Man, this is amazing. Look at this. Okay, so no doubt you saw it on the horizon, but we are approaching Broadway Tower. So it's a fully castle built in 1799 for Lady Coventry by the 6th Earl of Coventry. Uh, and it's heyday, it was a very popular retreat for famous people. And nowadays it's privately owned, but there's people on top of it. So it looks like we might just be out to head inside and take a closer look. 
In its heyday, Broadway Tower was a lively retreat. Apparently, men used to bathe on the roof of the tower, which was described as the most inconvenient, yet the most delightful place ever seen. In good weather, there are views to over 13 counties from the top, but it wasn't to be for me though, due to COVID booking restrictions. So I headed on and away from the crowds, down to Broadway Village itself. Awesome stuff. So we've just dropped down off the hill now into Broadway. I expect it's going to be pretty busy here. Apparently it's a very popular spot to visit and given the number of people coming down the hill, uh, I'm anticipating a lot of people. So anyway, that should be fine. We just pass on through and then head on along the trail. Also, I just cannot get enough of the colour of this stone. It's so optimistic. <laughs> Broadway was a place that I instantly fell in love with. Tiny alleys and petite porches, elegant gardens and smart rows of houses. It was lively and uplifting, and home to a museum, plenty of pubs, and, much to my surprise, a vibrant store that I just couldn't ignore. Man, it is pretty busy here. Uh, beautiful, just very busy. And guess what I've just found? Fruit. Ah. Oh. Okay, I have to check this out. <laughs> what have we got here? Peaches. Oh, massive lemons. Wow. Nice berries, strawberries, apricots. <gasps> Figs. Figs are the best. Thank you very much. That was not meant to happen, but I have fruit and I'm happy about it. <laughs> you know what? I'm on the trail. Life's good. I make every moment count, that's what I say. <laughs> Upon heading out of town, I passed by a sign that boasted the rich array of walking routes in the area. One of which was, of course, the Cotswold Way. Passing by the St Michael's and All Saints Church, I found myself once again surrounded by green and pleasant lands, walking along with a big smile on my face. It was so good to be back on the trail after such a long break due to Covid. It is good to be away from the crowds. I have to admit, especially coming out of lockdown, it feels crazy to be surrounded by so many people. I just feel quite tense and on edge. So it's nice to be just back out uh, the other side of Broadway. Um, there's three climbs today. I can't remember if I said that or not. So we're gonna start working up to the second in a bit. And I've decided, cause that's uh, nine miles in, that I will sit there and I'll eat my figs and my peach. I'm very excited about it. Dotted sheep in there. <laughs> nice green grass though. Hi, Ozzy. Hi. You're very beautiful. Oh, I like your colours. And who's this behind you? Is this a little horsey? The path was really easy to follow, with great quality signing. There were plenty of views, and I climbed steadily. Although I never really reached a summit point as such. Okay, so somehow I seem to have gone over the top of the hill, which is just under 300 meters, and we're heading down the other side now. So I'm actually just going to carry on to Stanton, which is about a mile and a half away. Um, it's the next village, and I'll sit on a bench there and eat my figs and my peach. I had to put them in a the bag, um, in my rucksack though, because the paper bag broke. <laughs> they fell on the floor and bruised, which was a bit sad. Uh, so the anticipation continues. Soon I will be able to eat them. Very soon. <laughs> hey, horsey. Would you be up for saying hi? You have so many flies on you. Hi. Mm, making friends on the trail what I like to do. <laughs> to be fair, they are usually animals. <laughs> hey, Bubba. I like your colour. Yeah. 
Wow, that's a building and a half. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Whew. All right, we just dropped down into the village finally, and there's a bench here, so I'm gonna take it as an opportunity to sit and eat some fresh fruit. Well, fresh slash slightly bruised fruit. <laughs> um, how do I get out of this? Oh. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. What's the damage? <clears throat> Peach has got a little bit of bleeding going on. I mean, that's pretty sad. And then here, the figs have been pretty squishy, but just about okay. Not a bad place to be enjoying a fig. There's nothing else I would choose to eat other than this peach right now. It's the best experience. And here come some horses. <laughs> Fruit devoured, I headed on through Stanton, boasting yet more elegant and historical architecture, and plenty of wildlife too. Hey, got to smell this rose. What do you think? Does it smell? Oh, yes, it does. Oof, man, that is perfect. That, that is just perfection. <laughs> Thank you, flower. <laughs> All right, heading up the track. Thank you, sign. <laughs> so peaceful. It's just me and the crickets right now. I'm loving this. Just, it's just rolling green hills. I mean, I know I keep saying it, but it is beautiful. Beautiful is the word right now. It's not harsh, it's not dramatic, it's not epic. It's just lovely. <laughs> it's uh, a very special place. Look how big that oak tree is. Wow. But you've got some stories to tell, huh? Also, you're pretty, it looks like you're just sort of cut out one side, like someone's had a bite. Nom nom nom. Yummy oak tree. <laughs> More big trees. Some kind of maple here, look. Oh, nice sun flare. Gosh, you are amazing. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, there's a big tree. <laughs> Crossing point, beware of horses. Ah, seems to be some kind of horse track. <laughs> In my head, it's like one of those cartoons, like you look left, you look right, and there's nothing. You step out onto the track and then boom, you're knocked down by a stampede. <laughs> uh, that didn't happen though. So no cartoon moment for me today. I was now in Stanway, passing the cricket pavilion before reaching Stanway House. That's an entrance. Oh my life, look at that. <laughs> Just, you know, as you do. <laughs> Set in a restored 18th century walled garden with its own tea room, the property claims to have the tallest gravity fountain in the world at 91 metres tall. Leaving the house behind, I pass by the water mill, part of the Stanway estate dating to the 13th century and is one of four on the estate used for wool, cloth and paper production, saw milling, electricity generation and to grind flour and animal feed. Success! <laughs> you having a drink, sheepy? Well, I was thinking about it. But then you decided to come along and interrupt our uh, little siesta, you know? <laughs> hey, I just met you. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of hay. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've left Wood Stenway or Stanway or Segway or whatever it was called <laughs> behind the last settlement. And that is indeed the last settlement before we get to Hales and the campsite at the fruit farm or near the fruit farm uh, so between me and camp 
just got one last climb, which is actually up to an old Iron Age hill fort. And if anybody has watched any of my other videos, you'll know I'm rather partial to a little bit of archaeology. <laughs> Up, we're going up. <laughs> Whew, I mean, you don't get to see that every day, let's be honest. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Well, there really isn't a lot to see here. Uh, we have these lumps here, which is possibly part of some rampart system. But basically, Iron Age Hill Fort is uh, not that visible. To be fair, it's quite common. Um, you just get some lumps and bumps in the landscape. Things get ploughed out over time. I mean, this would have been inhabited at least two and a half thousand years ago. Uh, so, can't quite expect a full on settlement to be here. Uh, but still, easy to see why they built it here or they um, established a settlement in this spot. Just uh, awesome views as the entire day has supplied really continues to amaze. Nobody seems to be about, but I'm at the fruit farm. Uh, the tea room is shut as expected. So I'm just gonna head down to camp and pitch up. And if someone walks by, they can take my money, no sweat. Uh, but that's it, day one on the Cotswold Way is done. Tick, <laughs> feels so good. All right, let's check this place out. Mm, it's quite big. Is there a reception anywhere? I quite like this spot. Maybe I'll pitch right here. <laughs> Hi. Hello, How you doing? You look fit to drop. Oh, I'm good. I'm just quite warm. <laughs> good first day. I think I will pitch right here. This will be home for the night. <laughs> Ah, uh, best part of the day, taking off the boots Whoosh. and the socks actually, <laughs> come on, <clears throat> and then airing one's feet for a fair few hours. <laughs> I've got this uh, minestrone soup packet that I have carried with me since Switzerland on the Tour de Mont Blanc. Kind of really needs using. Uh, it's supposed to serve four people. It's pretty much got 400 calories in. So I'm also having um, a whole bunch of snacks as well because it's not quite enough calories for this evening. But basically I just add, add it to water and stir it to the consistency I want. Just let it soak and that's it. I've got some soup for supper. So I've got a brew because the lovely lady, as you saw, gave me some milk, which is amazing. And um, life is pretty good. So I'm just going to write my diary and uh, the day is done. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. I am on the road, metaphorically and literally. Uh, day two of the Cotswold Way, so we're up and moving. Feels good to be up and moving, to be honest. Um, tent very wet with condensation, so I'm gonna have to dry that out at some point. And had a slightly later start than usual, because today is a very short day. Um, not ideal at all, but now that we're outside, or the other side of the pandemic, basically not all of the campsites have chosen to open up yet. So I had to stagger this, and today is a 12 mile day. I mean, I'm used to doing double that. <laughs> but I'm blessed because I'm gonna be meeting up with my good friend Anne. So some of you might know her from my coast to coast explorations. Uh, she's a wonderful lady, an immensely inspiring backpacker. And uh, we've been friends for a couple of years now. We met on the trail and she's walking the Cotswold Way in day walks and opposite direction to me. <laughs> so what she's gonna do is uh, gonna walk with me today, which is super cool. Um, so she is walking towards me now. We're hoping to meet up at Winchcombe, which is about two miles away from me here. That's the next settlement. And then we'll walk together all the way to the end of my day and she'll continue on her journey. I began the day by passing Hales Abbey. 
which dates back to the 13th century. And although today all that is visible are the remains of some walls, the building itself was once an elaborate affair, on a site chosen for its readily available limestone for building, pasture land for sheep grazing, and a reliable water supply as well. Console the way sign, almost at Winchcombe, and look who it is, look! There's a lonely hiker on the trail. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, good, thank you. There was lots to film, lots of flowers. <laughs> There's the castle. Now with Anne, we headed on through Winchcombe, an ancient Saxon borough and one-time capital of the Kingdom of Mercia. The village was home to Sudley Castle, though with the miles we had to cover, we weren't able to visit it on this day. So me and Anne have a bit of a thing for Eccles cakes. I just popped into the store and bought some, so cheers to you. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Mm. So good. I just noticed it myself. I don't know. <laughs> Scientist. These are so nice, these houses. Look at them. Anne, what have you just spotted? Styles. So why are there styles all the way up along this fence? Cricket field. Cricket field. So the balls, <laughs> we're not being hit where they're supposed to be hit. They go over here and then there's styles for ease of access. Very good. <laughs> well spotted. So, because this thing had no units at all, So we've had a good climb so far, a little bit of a sweat on, definitely also helps that it's warm. Well, the warmth helps with the sweating. Um, climbing up through the woods now, towards Blea's Nap, which is a uh, burial mound. So we're looking forward to seeing that. 55 metres long, five and a half metres high. Um, so, let's see if we can find it. Yeah. Taking a picture of the clouds. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Lots of different swirly ones. I think I need a new camera. Okay, so, Barrow is just there. Unfortunately, getting to it is proving a little bit difficult. As you can see, not all gates are made for backpackers. So, uh, you end it like this, and then get stuck like this. So, the only way... To navigate, it's to very precautiously scale it. This is not going to go well. It's wobbly. <laughs> it's proper wobbly. Ugh. Get over it <laughs> like this, <laughs> and then jump down like this. Ta da! <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> barrow, long barrow. Look at this. Nice. Wow, it's actually quite impressive. What does this say? Over five and a half thousand years old, constructed by prehistoric people. Remains of at least 38 people were buried within four chambers and behind portal setting. Radiocarbon dates show that they died between 3700 and 3600 BC in the early Neolithic. Probably their lifestyle based on cattle herding, small scale farming and hunting. Wow. It's just here, like, in the middle of nowhere. That did not work. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's to be wedged. <laughs> Did you just take a picture? <laughs> I didn't have to see the picture. <laughs> really enjoying looking around this uh, long barrow. There's another little entrance here. This one's tiny. So I'm going to take my pack off and see if I can crawl in it to show you. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's tiny. I'm going to die. Uh, uh, uh. We're in. You can sleep in here, you know. Inside one of the chambers in the long barrow. Very small and narrow, as you can see. A little bit claustrophobic, but you wouldn't be worried about that too much when you're uh, dead. <laughs> anyway, let's get out of here. Uh. 
Uh. Hi. <laughs> Survive. <laughs> These are insane. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit sore. <laughs> There's a view coming up. Thank you. We are here. Where is here? Well, here appears to be looking down over Winchcombe, just as you were a few hours ago. Uh, so we're starting to realise, I'm certainly starting to realise, how loopy this walk is. So see here, that's where we camped, walked to Winchcombe, and then we just done this loop here, and now we're here, 9A. Um, then we're going to go up to Cleve Hill, we're going to stop for a brew there, and then down to the reservoir roughly is where I'm camping, so really not far. Um, huh, yeah, anyway, I was going to show you which book I've been using uh, yesterday, but I forgot. So this is the one, Cotswold Way Trailblazer Guide, and I'm accompanying it with this, which is the A to Z map, the OS map. I have to admit, I haven't really looked at this yet, other than in the evenings, but it's literally just a book version of the OS maps. You just have to work from back to front because that's the way they've done it. So anyway, put it all away. Let's get moving on to the next loop. Is, is born, what's that? Is a born way? That's a new one. Is it? Yeah. That's that river. Oh, is it? Where's it go? Noisy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because of the way maybe it's a prison. Mm. <laughs> Quite a few gates today. Oh, this one actually opens. Thank you kindly. You're the gate whisperer. <laughs> We're getting close to the top of Cleve Hill now. Uh, so what's interesting for me is this sort of lumpy bumpy landscape. I don't know a lot about it, but I wonder if it's either A, being quarried, or B, it's a sort of remains of a hill fort. One thing I do know though, is when we get to the trig point, it's the highest point on the trail, 325 above sea level. Uh, we've got the golf course here on the left. Uh, not many golfers about, but there is uh, a golfing center a bit further up, I believe, where you can get tea and coffee. Although Anna is kindly carrying our very own brew set, so we are good to go. Uh, the breeze is picking up a bit up here, which is nice and refreshing. And I have no doubt the higher we get, the views are going to get even better. Oh, jammed in there. Welcome to Cleve Common. SSI, triple SI, Archaeology and Geology. Three scheduled ancient monuments, the cross dike, the hill fort, ah, the hill fort, and the ring. You are here. Maybe this is us. There's a lot of paths around here and a lot of people as well. We're just trying to make sure we do actually stay on the Cotswold Way. I mean, kind of okay because we're just going to the highest point, but still. You don't want a blue blaze, as they say on the AT. <laughs> Golf ball. <laughs> Bosh. <laughs> what were you saying earlier? The hill's not that bad. No, not that bad. No. What is this? I think it's the way has just chosen to go the steepest way. The main track was gentle. Good climb, just walking up to trick point. Nearly there. Yeah, boom. <laughs> All right, what can we see then? From the top at 310 meters above sea level, we could see over Cheltenham with its race course domineering the view. The surrounding landscapes were made up of a patchwork of, of fields and forests, and it was like looking down over a tiny model village, a world apart, yet totally connected. Boop. <laughs> right then, time for a brew. A brew with a view. Needed a little bit of shelter from the wind, so Anne is brewing down in a bush. <laughs> brew. 
with a view. What are you doing, Anne? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Is it now? Why might that be, Anne? <laughs> Oh, you're catching some Pokemon, Anne. No, there aren't any here. Oh, shame. <laughs> Have they all been caught because there's so many people? Good stuff. So we're on the move again. Brew went down very well indeed, I have to say. Uh, so we've only got about five miles now to camp today. We did stop for a fair while, just chilled out. Because um, why not? <laughs> really nice day. Um, not really got very far to go. So uh, just gonna walk parallel with this view now, which is pretty epic, and uh, make a bit more progress along the trail. Also, try not to wander too close to the edge. <laughs> OS map app has come in handy once again. Fort, yeah, we just done the fort. the fort. So we went past the hill fort without even realizing it. And it looks like- Because we were gassing. Gassing. <laughs> is that a phrase? Is it gassy? I'm not that gassy. <laughs> it's an old phrase. You wouldn't it? know. You're no. too young. I'm too young. Okay. <laughs> right. Back to the map with the gassing. <laughs> yeah, seriously go down. Uh-huh. Okay, so since you've done most of the route so far, how would you rate the signing for this trail? I'd say it's very good. Yeah? Yeah. You know how to follow it. So you couldn't get lost? <laughs> That's a statement. <laughs> a bit further on and we entered Paradise, or at least Presbury Hill Nature Reserve, one of a chain of nature reserves along the route, making for truly wonderful walking. All right, can you see this webbing? Yeah. These are spiders' nests. Can you see down them? Yeah, I can see the spider in this one. Oh, no, not okay. Let me get one. <laughs> <laughs> Big ones though. Hmm. This is a nice scrubby area actually. Yeah, that's a lot of thistles. I bet the wildlife appreciates that. So much going on in this scrubland and of course being a fan of foraging I've just found some wild strawberries. Look at these guys. Look at this one. Mm, that's so sweet. That's good. Mm. We've come out onto this road, uh, making good progress. We've got middle Colgate Farm here, the entrance to it. So I'm staying at Colgate Farm. And there's also a higher Colgate Farm, is that correct? Upper. Upper. I so. Upper, higher, sure. above, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so I just have to find the right Colgate Farm and then done for the day. Ta-da! Well, you can recognise that. B&B &B camping. Uh, so the way goes that way and we're going that way, but first of all I have to get through here. Safe. Here we go. This road by the noisy pylons, can you hear them? Will take us to the campsite. Oh, that is not good. Colgate B&B and camping. It can't be that far. So the campsite is here. We think. We have to go down this track. Is this the right track we're going down? Yeah. And then I'm done. But you're not quite done, are you? No. You're going to leave me. I'm going to leave you now. All by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have a good walk. Thank you. Sure have a good fine. drive back. Yeah. Let me know on your back. <laughs> Thank you for the brew today. That's okay. Much appreciated. Yeah. Good morale boost. Nice to see you. Yeah, and we'll see you very soon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye, Anne. Bye. 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 Nice. Thank you. <laughs> and just like that, we are alone on the trail once again. Such a good day. Anne is just the best company. We talked about everything and I loved it. I uh, found the raspberries, had a nice chill up on Cleve Hill. It's been a really, really good day, actually. Actually, that's where we'll be going tomorrow. So we drop down, then we climb up and sort of uh, follow the hills up there. Hi, how are you? You come to say hello? Hello, hello, hello. Noise waggly, what you got there? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Shh. 
Good morning. So I thought I'd just come to you from the cool shade of the trees here. We're in Dodderswell Wood. Um, so I've left the campsite, left the farm. It's half past six. I just walked the little stretch to rejoin the main trail. And now the sun is still coming up. It's lovely. Uh, although it's very warm in its direct path. Uh, speaking of paths, we're following the path today. And uh, we've got about 18, 19 miles, if a little bit further actually. Um, some undulating terrain, I keep saying that, but today it is officially happening, um, which I'm really excited about. Highest point is Lecampton Hill, I think, just over 300 meters above sea level. And then once we're up there, sort of six miles in or so today, it kind of stays high and just has a little bit of fun with, with um, the trail along the escarpment. So we're headed to Painswick today. Um, let's just see how we get on. I'm really excited. Uh, I know the weather is due to change later today um well so apparently it's going to change uh but we'll see how we get on with that as well um we're just dropping down now through the woods to uh the Dodderswell reservoir which i believe most likely serves cheltenham um and then we have a, a big old climb upwards okay just crossing over the a40 thankfully it's quite quiet and then on along the way this way. <laughs> I entered Linover Wood, owned by the Woodland Trust. Yet another example of a managed yet natural space, totally teeming with beauty and life. There were wildflower meadows, bird songs from every direction, and trees of every possible kind. I really couldn't get enough of this kind of walking. Mankind and nature, working and living side by side. This, to me, was the definition of heaven. Oh boy, we've hit the jackpot. All right, Stick, you can have a rest. Look at this, raspberry heaven, woohoo. <laughs> oh, well, this is good. It's always good to get your polyphenols in when you're on the trail. Mmm, man, that is like the most perfect raspberry. Although, only downer is I can still taste toothpaste. Not ideal. Too good. Okay, now I know from experience, I could easily spend a couple hours in that spot picking every single raspberry. Uh, so I'm gonna make myself move on. Goodbye raspberries. <laughs> Let's uh, keep making progress. Hey, you see this dead trunk here? So this would be awesome for insects as a little, um, sort of stop over you can see the woodworm that's come out of it but um no doubt there'll be loads of other boring insects in fact there's even some kind of grub thing in there very very good for native wildlife and of course the bugs they then feed the birds and so on the whole sort of ecological system uh progresses which is uh really cool it's just so nice to see or walk through areas like this that are managed uh entirely for the purpose of conservation and preservation of our um, of our wildlife species, both flora and fauna. I really love it. It's a, a good feeling to know someone's being cared about. Whoo, man, that's a view. Heading under the noisy pylons. It's so disturbing the way they like crackle. Uh, <laughs> and we've come out uh, to the escarpment now. Look at this. Wow, man. The walk along the escarpment and Charlton King Common was perhaps one of my all-time highlights of the trail. Superb views, easy walking, and brilliant grassland spaces. I'm seriously loving it up here. And I just love how Cheltenham, even though I'd rather that was a sort of pristine wilderness, is uh, curtained by the escarpment that we're walking on. I mean, it is, it's just incredible. I'm, I'm really quite lost for words right now. I've never experienced anything like this. The mixture of uh, sort of raw natural beauty and uh, settlements, a big settlement actually. Here we go, the Campton Hill, the site of an impressive Iron Age hill fort. One of a series of large hill forts found around the Cotswold from Bath and Chip and Camden. 
Look at this. So we are here. Oh wow, you can see the circles. Hot circles. That's amazing. Feels really good to be here. This is one of the higher points for the day at 293 meters above sea level. And the trick point itself is rather interesting. Check it out. It's like a tartany kind of color. <laughs> right here on the top of the hill. At 294 meters, the Campton Hill was one of the highest points along the way. As usual, the views were stunning, but a bit more curiously, nearby lay an interesting feature called the Devil's Chimney. It was said to be the chimney to the Devil's Lair, which lay underground and away from prying eyes, where he would plot his schemes before emerging in the world to wreak havoc. Local nature is a LNR. Oh, there's bee orchids here. I've always wanted to see a bee orchid. Glow worms. Wow. <laughs> here we go, so we're at Crickley Hill, zoned by the National Trust. Uh, so we're gonna climb on up through the woods and then hopefully we'll find a visitor centre and maybe get a brew. crossing thing. You just gotta go basically. <laughs> yeah. Nice. We've entered into this beautiful beach woodland. Uh, my guidebook says that many of the trees in this region are 250 years old. In fact some are even 400 years old. They've managed to escape the uh, mass deforestation that occurred during World War II right across the country. So many trees were pulled down because we needed the timber. Of course, we couldn't get imports in the same way. And it's nice that obviously we have these younger trees here growing thinner, trying to reach up towards the canopy, get as much light as they can in competition with the older ones. And I love that there are a lot of older specimens here that have been left to grow that escaped that big uh, demolition of the forests in the UK and uh, you know this is why our LNR and triple SI and all of the sort of conservation uh, statuses that these landscapes have are so important because they do help to protect them for future generations and in the event of exceptional times uh, these are such sacred special places that keep our native wildlife happy and healthy and of course they keep us happy and healthy as well because we are all part of nature. We need time outside, breathing spaces, escaping, uh, escaping the monotony and the fast pace and the stresses of day-to-day -day life and coming out to woodlands, coming out to wild spaces, as wild as they may be, uh, really do our mind, body, heart, spirit, the world of good. Okie dokie, let's cross this one. Here we go, Cooper's Hill, next point of interest, three miles away. Let's do it. Little bit squishy here. I mean, if this is in the height of summer, I bet it gets a bit damp in winter. <laughs> nice uh, excursion here though, thankfully. This wooded stretch has uh, really given me some good thinking time. 
And I've been sort of dwelling on how lockdown has really knocked my confidence. Long distance backpacking is pretty much what I do for a living, uh, running wild and helping people to get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health, walking, outdoor activities, that's what I do. And of course, with lockdown, not being able to do that to quite the same extent has really made me, uh, or created space for doubt to infiltrate into my consciousness and I've not enjoyed that at all. So when it came to planning this walk and coming on out, I was unsure of my abilities, especially when coupled with the injuries I've got right now. And it made me fearful and arguably could have, if I let it, stopped me from getting out here, which is ridiculous given that backpacking is just what I feel like I was born to do. <laughs> um, that being said, now that I'm out here, it just feels so good. It feels completely natural. It feels like there's just this eternal calmness within me uh, in the confidence that I have working through a landscape and pushing my body and <laughs> carrying everything I need on my back. And uh, <clears throat> I've just been thinking about commitment and how I, over and over again, when I'm on the trail, commit to looking after slash loving myself um, slash serving myself in the best possible way in order to access the trail in the way that I want to. If I really just head down, push myself too hard, uh, it could take away from the experience. If I push my injuries too hard, it could take away from the experience. If I pushed my mental health too hard, it could take away from the experience. And if I really, truly sat and believed in that doubt, then it could take away from the experience. So I've been really hard, trying really hard just to keep committing to what I know I can do. And that is to listen to my body and partner with my mind in order to have the best possible experience when I'm on the trail. And I'm really enjoying that conscious process. Um, and I just hope that as the trail continues, as I progress along the way, that I can continue to grow in understanding the worries and uncertainties that I have so that I can grow stronger through them um, as I challenge my abilities, as I challenge those thoughts and prove that I can. We need to make sure we don't let anybody tell us what we can and what we can't do. The only person who can say that is us. We instinctively know where our limits are and I think we can also push them when we are really tuned in with ourselves. So that's basically just the train of thought I've been sitting with uh, over the last couple of hours today. Um, committing to myself, committing to the journey that is life with all its ups and downs, ebbs and flows and uh, committing to the trail as well just so I can get the best possible experience when I'm out here in nature, me and the natural world. Okie dokie. So, heading up to the top of Cooper's Hill, nice steep climb and we can see as well, Cranham Corner is, or Cranham Corner, one and a half miles. So that's our next point. First of all though, let's get to the top of this hill. This is a short and sharp ascent. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the views from the top. Let's get this done. I think this is the edge. If it is, that's pretty crazy. Chasing the cheese. Whew. Wow. I'm not 100% sure where the top is. I'm just following the trail. But basically it's here at the end of May it's the annual cheese rolling competition where competitors throw themselves down the hill after a big wedge or a big roll of Gloucester cheese. Up to 4,000 people can come and watch the races. Often the paramedics are kept very busy. Pretty dangerous when you add in the classic British weather. But it's been a part of the history here for hundreds of years. And even though the event was told to officially stop, the locals have decided to persevere with the traditions, and in my opinion, rightly so. 
The woods around Cooper's Hill were dark and disorientating, and there were paths everywhere. I spent a good while wandering around, until I was really sure I didn't know where I was, and I had to pull out my map app. Okay, this is officially frustrating. I really am very uncertain as to where I am. I've got the OS map app on. I'm following this main trail now. Trouble is with my phone is the GPS is not very accurate. It's an error within my um, system. <laughs> Just spotted this tree. It's fallen down, but look how intertwined the branches are, or the trunk. That's uh, quite something. And we're just here in the darkness of the woods still. Here we go. Road. Rainy road. Sign. This is good. Finally made it out of the woods. That was a bit of an ordeal. Uh, so working towards Pranham Corner now. It's properly raining as well, so I'm gonna have to put waterproof cover on my backpack. Not keen to don waterproofs, uh, so they're gonna be sticky in this temperature, but I think I might just have to. I've got three days left on the trail and only one set of clothing, so probably should practice some self-care. <laughs> In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. A wimbo wimbo in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. A wimbo wimbo. A wimbo it, a wimbo it, a wimbo it, a wimbo it. I'm just looking at the map because I wanted to see where the golf course was. Oh, windy. And it seems like we somehow missed Painswick Beacon. I mean, the main trail doesn't go over the trig point, but either way, we're on the other side of it and we're on the downward trajectory to Painswick now. There's probably about a mile and three quarters to go, which is uh, good, actually. Um, the rain is easing somewhat, dare I say that out loud. <laughs> uh, and generally, I'm feeling okay, actually. Injuries are definitely playing up a lot more today, but we're getting there anyway. Looking forward to checking out the campsite in about three quarters of an hour, maybe. Walking alongside the golf course, I soon found myself passing cat brain quarry, named in Old English to describe the different type of soils, and not actually anything to do with cats or their brains, as the word implies. Painswick, happy days. Painswick lacked the honey-coloured stone of villages up to this point along the way. Sitting in its off-white colour, it felt rather drab and oppressive. Still, it was an incredibly historical place, and once again was built up around the wool trade in the 18th century. So I've just come across to the St Mary's Church in Painswick, said to have 99 yew trees, um, and legend have it, has it that the devil won't let the hundredth grow. Gosh, this is a really interesting place. The churchyard was atmospheric and puzzling, full to the brim with yew trees and elegant looking gravestones. I wasn't really sure what to make of it, but I stuck around, soaking it all in and trying to make sense of the strange sight that fell before me. Eventually, I slowly made my way out of the village and on along Vicarage Street towards my campsite for the night. I'm feeling warm in my waterproof, but it's uh, trying to rain now again. Um, on our way to the campsite, left Painswick behind. Big steep hill I've just come down, so I have to go back up that again in the morning. <laughs> but it's been a good day today. Um, I've enjoyed the, the walk, I've enjoyed the thinking time in the woods. Um, this morning I enjoyed definitely the most. Actually, it was just a nice, varied walk. Um, but that's it, we're nearly at the end of day three and uh, can't wait to pitch up, have some food, get some sleep and do it all again tomorrow. Tomorrow's a long day actually, so I'm going to try and get a nice uh, early night and early start ready for day four on the trail tomorrow. Wow. Ooh, 
This is a bit fancy, isn't it? Little log burning stove. Mate, I can hang out in here easy. <laughs> hey look, Adam, what's up mate? <laughs> awesome. Good morning. It is day four on the Cotswold Way. I'm feeling tired, <laughs> I'm completely honest with you. I didn't sleep so well last night actually, um, but I'm up and moving now, uh, leaving Painswick behind. So we've got about 23 miles today. Um, lots of ups and downs, lots of archeological sites. So there's plenty to keep me interested. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, I'm just gonna try and take it, take it steady. It was uh, predominantly my foot that kept me up last night, just really <laughs> pulsing with pain. So I'm trying to work with that today. Um, sort of be friends with my body as it were and uh, we'll get there when we get there. Where is there? North Nibley. That's where we're aiming for today. So let's see how we get on. I'm really looking forward to this. It's uh, quite overcast and also quite muggy, hence the t-shirt. I'm trying to put on or coax myself to put on my damp clothing this morning. It's like oh we're back to this again <laughs> but we're up and moving and it feels good to be back on the trail. Retracing my steps through the churchyard, I pass by the village stocks, sitting eerily alone on the side of the path. Soon though, I was heading out of the village and on into greener pastures. This is cool. Little bridgey thing over the stream. <laughs> Not much water in it though. What does this say? Oh, cool. 55 miles to Bath. So pretty much halfway here. Look at this sign, you see? It says Cotswold Way, National Trails Acorn, and an arrow, 55 miles to go. I wonder if there's anything on the other side. Hey, look, there is. Chipping Campton, 47 miles so far. Not too bad at all, actually. <laughs> that feels good, I'm loving this. Blech. I'm sweaty and hot, <laughs> but I found this thing here. I don't even see that. I can't read it at all, but it's like some kind of marker. Um, there's nothing on the other side. Just uh, a rock with a half decent view. The trees have all been cut back so I can see through them. And I can see right the way across. Um, quite rather fine indeed. <laughs> Wow, this is a good viewpoint. <laughs> Can we see Stroud? There is Stroud. Oh, that's quite a long way to go. <laughs> Alrighty, made it to the trig point. Oh man, you can see out over Stroud. You can hear the M5 as well, the wind is blowing the traffic noise. Awesome viewpoint once again, working our way around the escarpment. And this is also the site of an Iron Age hill fort. And you can actually see some of the lumps and bumps here. Uh, unlike some of them where there's nothing you can see, but another Iron Age hill fort. I mean all the way along It's just Iron Age hill fort, Iron Age hill fort, Iron Age hill fort. And I'm sure they were all interconnected through trade and communication systems But I was thinking as I was walking up here uh, Whilst I can see the advantage of living up here for a defensive reason like you can see who's coming your way Where did these people get their water from? Um, because you know, we're on a limestone uh, sort of landscape here so the water infiltrates I guess maybe they had wells but then you know you look down at the major settlements that we're walking above and uh, I guess the settlements were built down there because that's where the water was so they shifted from up here to down there as the um, lifestyles and way of life changed anyway just gonna take in this view and then we'll press on along the trail Hello. <laughs> oh, that's a nice big boopy nose, that is. Yeah. Oh. Hello, hello. Can I take you home? You could do hiking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cross all the way. 
conduit going wild. Look at this little thing I found. Some kind of fairy house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like a little hut on top and then a little door. So many paths around here. <laughs> Just trying to make sure I'm following the right ones. We are heading down towards Stonehouse, which is one of many uh, settlements on the outskirts of Stroud. So Stroud itself is home to about 40,000 people and it was a cloth town, so built up during the Industrial Revolution. We don't actually go through it, but in a minute we're going to cross over the canal and the river as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that and I might just have a quick sit down and a drink before um, continuing onwards. But, well, first of all, we've got to get there. <laughs> uh, how do I fit through here then? Hopefully, if I stand up here. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't that smooth. Sorry, cows, I don't want to make you jump. <laughs> a little further along the way, and I found myself passing through a vineyard, which totally took me by surprise, with their fluorescent green leaves and berries looking enchanting in the afternoon sun. I have to say, it really sparked my imagination when it comes to walking through Italy. Perhaps that's an adventure for another day. Ah, look at these oxide daisies again. Such lovely flowers. I love how they just grow on the fringes of fields like this, in the masses. And then there's an odd poppy. Hello. <laughs> so nice. And then, as we've had all day, nice countryside views. It was just like home. Eventually, I made it to the Ebley Canal. This was actually the lowest point along the way, at just a few metres above sea level. The canal was mostly used to transport coal right through until 1954. As was often the case with the trail, though, I moved on from the industrial area and back out into the countryside rather quickly, which was never too far away. Some kind of uh, reed bed there. Probably quite nice for the wildlife. Have a little sploosh about. Get some water. Very good. Woo! What's this? A message box with messages in it. Let's have a look. <clears throat> it's June 20. Huh. Messages in the box. A bit slopey. <laughs> Lockdown, peace. Peace out, bro. Day one, the Cotswold Way. Adventure. <clears throat> I have a really weird feeling that I'm being followed. And I'm not sure why at all. Oh, that's why. Hi. <laughs> uh, cows. <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's a hat. Woo! Should I try it on? Hang on, do a trade. This hat here. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Go around looking like a uh, farmer. <laughs> No, I think I prefer mine. Oh, sweaty head. <laughs> Alright, let's go. A bit further on through Coley Nature Reserve, and I reached Nymphsfield Long Barrow, dating to 2500 BC. During excavations in 1937, archaeologists found flint arrowheads, dog whelk pendants, and the remains of pottery within the mound. And here you go. A visual representation, artist's illustration of what it would have looked like. I love these so much, they really inspire my imagination. 
The walk along the escarpment to Coley Peak itself was truly lovely, and seeing families enjoying picnics and playing with dogs made my heart sore. The views weren't half bad either, to be fair. I soon reached the base of Cam Long Down, a big old hill that is actually an Iron Age hill fort. The route goes up and over the top, but I was really starting to struggle with my injuries, and so, in an act of self-kindness, I decided to skirt along the base, following a different path into Dursley. <laughs> Have a look at these guys, they're all Shetland ponies. They're so tiny! Hey! Manji, manji, manji. Don't disturb us, we have serious grass eating to do right here, you know? Yeah. Oops, that fence is a bit wobbly. Hello. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he's not coming. <laughs> they did come. Oh, hello. Don't eat my trousers. Hello. <laughs> oh, they're arguing. I want to say hi to the human. A short while on and I found myself exploring the streets of Dursley, which, as we've seen, with many of the towns in the Cotswold, was founded on the wool trade. It was also home to the Lister family of engineering fame, who still have a presence here. Okay, that was an interesting place. Not so in keeping with the whole Cotswold honey coloured stone theme that we've had so far. Just walking on now, um, I bought some supplies for tomorrow and the final day, so all good. Here we go. Golf course. I walked over Stinchcombe Hill, yet another golf course, before finally dropping down towards North Nibley and the end of my route for the day. You can see a big old monument ahead of us there on the hill. Uh, I guess we go to that tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to learning about that in the morning. Although <laughs> it does mean we once again start the day with a little bit of a climb from North Nibley up to the top. Nothing we can't handle there. Okie dokie, North Nibley, we've made it. So tonight I'm camping in the grounds of Nibley House. I think it's about a tenner. Um, feeling a bit headachey actually. I've not drunk enough today. But overall, I mean, it's been a good day. Um, covered the mileage quite well. Obviously had a couple of alternations, alterations even. Um, but a lot of woodland walking again, which is good. I just did not expect that of this walk. So, um, I mean, it's easy enough to settle into. Anyway, now that today is nearly done, at least there's were two days left on the trail. Not sure how I feel about that to be honest, but let's get my tent up and do a bit of processing. Day four is done. Happy days. Nibley House is a working farm and a grade two listed building with architecture dating back to the 17th century. The lady who welcomed me was warm and friendly and I instantly felt as though I'd hit the jackpot of all campsites and I knew I'd sleep well, tucked away in the corner of their gallant gardens. Ah, uh, it is the morning. <laughs> I am awake. Um, I wanted to show you before I get started today just what happened last night. So first of all, this is where I was pitched. Not bad, is it? Just literally in the middle of this beautiful flower garden here. And there's my tent. I'm just in the process of packing up and uh, it's looking pretty condensation-y today. Yay! Um, but I <laughs> basically I decided to have a shower and I wasn't told that the shower leaked. Um, and so everything got soaked and these are my trousers that I'd normally be wearing today. They're really heavy. They're just full of water um, I've wrung them out. I let them dry all of the afternoon yesterday, but they're still really wet and heavy So basically I'm gonna walk in my sleeping trousers this morning uh, It's something I wouldn't normally do, but I've only got one more day to go anyway um, Just to give those time to dry out. We've got about 18 miles on the trail today Heading up to Tall Martin, which is um, really getting on towards Bath now actually, so it's the penultimate day on the trail. Um, so at some point I'll change back into those trousers when I can tolerate the dampness. Right now they're just soaking wet. And probably they'd dry quicker if they were on me, but um, no, I'm just not doing that this morning. <laughs> um, 
I might change my mind half a mile down the road uh, once I'm warmed up a little bit. But uh, that's basically the plan. So I'm just going to finish taking down my tent and then we'll hit the trail. Can't wait to do this. Penultimate day on the Cotswold Way. This is very weird for me. It feels like I'm walking out in my pajamas. <laughs> Never mind. We're on the trail. Let's do this. There it is. Look at that. That's a good shot. This was the Tyndale Monument, boasting 121 spiral steps to the top. Unfortunately, due to COVID, it was shut when I visited, but I was instead treated to a spectacular aerial display of a pair of nesting peregrine falcons. I stood there for about half an hour, watching them swirl around, their chicks chirping away in the window frame, clearly not far off setting wing for the first time themselves. Gained a walking partner. A bit fluffier than me though. <laughs> a short while on and I was soon dropping off the hill alongside a copse of trees planted to commemorate the victory at Waterloo and the jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1887. Uh, just trying to cross this road. There's a lot of cart. Okay, go, 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 go. Whew, we survived. Okay, boys and under edge, we made it. Here we go. Let's get through this town and onto the trail. I liked Wooden Under Edge from the off. It was a friendly place with lots of independent businesses and tiny Cotswold houses. I had good fun looking around and there was loads to see, so I took my time wandering the streets before exiting out the other side along the way. Cotswold letterpress. And it's got all the old letterpressing equipment in the window. Wow, that's cute. <laughs> okay, so there's sourdough. Some random thing. Lardy cake. Mm. Bread pudding. <laughs> Walk away from the bread pudding. <laughs> Little river. Oh, this is nice. It's actually quite clear, just a bit muddy. We've been winding our way along this little stream. I've just come out on the road and found one of my all time favorite sides to see, which is a toad crossing sign. So I guess the toads must cross over here to get to the other side. <laughs> that and red squirrel signs are my favorite to see, but no red squirrels here. Anyway, I think we've got a little bit of a climb now. Um, Doing good, feeling good, just keep on moving. Can just about over there see the monument where we've come from. So we've walked all the way around and down and back up to this very track. Love a good hay field. I uh, no idea where the path goes, but yay! <laughs> Whoa, check this out. Nice waterfall. Huh. There really hasn't been hardly any water on this walk, to be honest with you. I think wild camping would be an interesting uh, situation. So it's quite nice to hear that sound. I've missed the sound of running water. Just crossing over this little stream. And then over here is another sign. Monarch's Way. That's another long distance, that's a long, long distance trail actually. I think it runs for over 600 miles. I know it goes past our house in Somerset and right the way down to Dorset as well. The route went on and on and I actually found myself getting quite bored of the lanes and fields. Still, I passed by a monument in dedication to General Lord Robert Somerset standing proud on the side of the trail. And otherwise, I just kept walking. Here we go. Hawkesbury Upton. Next little settlement we're going through. Oh, actually not. <laughs> we turn off straight away. Leaving the houses out along Drover's Pool, it seems. 
nice plaque. Leaving the pool behind, I followed an old drover's road used to ferry cattle up and down the country for markets far and wide. Again, Mingless Hill Fort. You can just see the lumps there ahead of us. A few on this trail, that's for sure. trail has its sort of plodding stage. I'll never forget the stretch through the Vale of York on the coast to coast, Wainwright's coast to coast. I mean that goes on and on. This is feeling similar to be honest. <laughs> it's going on and on. Uh, but I don't know, it's about taking the time to notice the little things and that's where sort of being interested in wildlife and geology and archaeology really helps to amplify the qualities of a walk. Uh, even so, there's not a huge amount to keep me inspired today. A lot of field walking, kind of feels like walking around home, just imagining I've got the dogs running at my heels. <laughs> By this point, I had gone through eight little settlements and was now making my way down to Old Sodbury, where I found myself passing through the churchyard of St John the Baptist. Well, that's a view. <laughs> Not bad at all. Codswood Way, there's the dog in there. This looks like an old water pump as well. Ah, oh, really pretty. <laughs> Look at this. Books. <laughs> Fancy anything to read? Hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> Got a billboard here as well. There's the dog in. Oh my gosh, built in 1590. What? That is crazy. To accommodate railway workers. In 1884, it was owned by the Parrot family, who also owned the brewery up the hill, which closed down in 1922. Oh, that's sad. Wow, old toll house. We've got the hill fort, old mill. God, there's a lot going on here. And then the Cotswold Way. <laughs> so we're entering, it, entering into the Doddington estate now. So this place basically was owned by the Codrington family up until 1980 and they made their wealth um, basically using slaves on the sugarcane plantations in the Caribbean. So it feels a bit odd to be walking through it to be honest with you. Um, nowadays it is owned privately, there's 300 acres of land, pastoral land, woodlands, meadows and we're going to be walking through a small stretch right now all the way to Tall Martin. The path took me through the open pastoral lands of the estate, but not so close to any of the buildings. So, for the time being, it was just me and the sheep heading on along the way. Well, well, well. Some cute little bridge here. Look at this. Oh, nice. Looking over their casual moat, you know, because that's how the other half live. Nice tree reflection. Also, I'd really like to point out this oak tree here has fallen down. Can you see these stakes? They put in place to hold it upright. Still alive. Cool, huh? The wonky tree. <laughs> Very much being grazed down by the sheep. 
but uh, thankfully the signing is really good we have a sign here there's one behind me and there's one just over there actually speaking of signing you know i have to give this walk some credit the signing has been pretty impeccable i mean once or twice i've gone wrong in the woodlands but how much of that is my error <laughs> i'm not entirely sure but literally it's like basically you turn and there'll be a sign at the next junction or within sight in the horizon um obviously i've had quite good weather so that helps but yeah definitely beneficial signing so there we go anyway nearly there to martin here we come here we are over the stile one two three and we are out on a busy a road so this oh man this is the a46 and I'm gonna leg it across it right now. Go, 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 go. We have one more field to go, people, and then we've made it to the inn. Let's do this thing. Whew. Oh, cool sign. To Sirencester, to Talbury, to Bath. Skidoosh. Hey, and we also have this Bath, 17 miles by the Cotswold Way. It's all happening. And then lastly, Tormerton quarter of a mile this way Woo. some kind of pee in here we'll look at this look hmm and then there's like vetchy plants it's like a real nice wildflower meadow crossed between some old arable land look just looking at my map here we're on this road I think this might be where I leave the way because the Compass Inn, which is where I'm camping in the backyard of, uh, isn't actually on the way. I think it's down here. I think the best thing to do is to go and have a look. Feeling pretty good right now, really. Uh, the weather seems to be definitely coming in. It didn't rain on us earlier, which was awesome. Uh, I've definitely got a blister on the back heel of my right foot. I'm wearing the wrong socks. <laughs> These are not my socks. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise I'm feeling okay, my injuries held up reasonable I had to put some ibuprofen cream on my back haven't had to do that so far in years actually, I really try not to but uh, we're almost at the end of day 5 on the Cotswold Way as you saw, we've got about 17 miles tomorrow and that'll take us to Bath and the end of the trail super 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 excited but first up I'm staying at the Compass Inn which is owned by the Best Western uh, and you can camp for a donation around the back and that's what I'm going to do and this is it right here Hello there. Hiya, um, I rang up a week or so ago I'm just asking if it might be possible for me to camp here yeah, Feeling the chill in the air right now but that's often the case when you're a bit sweaty um, This is basically what I can or where I'm camping tonight which is pretty cool So it's the last night on the trail our uh, tent is slowly being put up I've just been lying on my roll mat because I'm waiting for my tent to dry out. Um, but it's actually a really nice space, to be fair. I mean, you can hear the road. The car park is just there. But you've got access to the toilets and stuff inside uh, when they're open, which is awesome. And there's everything you need to be a happy camper. So I'm going to whip up a brew and get some food in me. And then we'll get ready for our final day on the trail tomorrow. Really excited about it. Um, but just hoping to get a good night's sleep. And then off we go. Final set of miles. Here we go there, and final day on the trail. We have 17-ish miles to Bath. Super pumped about this, ready to get it done. Uh, so heading back up the road, let's rejoin the route and press on with some miles. Final day, come on. I don't know if you can hear that traffic noise, but we're just getting ready to cross over the M4 motorway. Let's have a look. Always such a satisfying feeling just being completely on foot and everyone else is stuck behind a wheel. <laughs> Do you see that sign? Bath Spa, Roman Baths, Western Burt Arbitorium. That's us folks. We're getting closer. <laughs> Does this one say? Dyram, three and a half miles. That's our next spot. Heading off this way. Got across the A road, 
Let's get out. Oh, mate, how's that for timing? Go, 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 go. <laughs> so many of these roads, and I still haven't died, so life is good. Whew. Where does that sign point? Is that down the track or is that in the woods? That's a bit weird. Uh, that must be down the track. All right, let's go. Nice pond there. Well, sort of nice, a lot of algae on the surface. Hmm, tractor doing its work in the field behind me. Before I knew it, I was passing by Dirham House and Park, owned by the National Trust and dating to the end of the 17th century. Ah, look at these oxide daisies again. Such lovely flowers. I love how they just grow on the fringes of fields like this, in the masses. And then there's an odd poppy. Hello. <laughs> so nice. And then, as we've had all day, Nice countryside views. It was just like home. Um, I've got here um, Cold Ashton Manor. Can't see the house, but this is a massive gate. <laughs> That's big enough, isn't it? And then, as, as is often the case, a big wall blocking everybody out. <laughs> Look at all these roses. Hmm, which should I smell? this one. Wow. That is intense. Gosh. White rose is so nice. It just smells so good. What about this one? It's like orangey. Can you see that? Mm, that one doesn't have a smell. That's sad. What about this one? Nice pink one. Woo! That's a good smell as well. Oh, roses. Pure happiness right there. Back over the A road again. Oh, good timing. Trying not to get mowed down by this lorry. <laughs> and just pressing on along the track now for a while. Over the cattle grid. Oh, it's half filled in. Easy peasy. <laughs> it's amazing to think that we are single digits in terms of miles away from a city like Bath. It's very, very peaceful now that we're away from the main road. And I'm uh, enjoying this a lot more than earlier. It's good stuff. Awesome valley here now, uh, heading up towards the monument, which I uh, will talk about in a little bit when we get there. Oh, mountain biker. I'm gonna get run over. Hi. <laughs> Officially got a sweat on, which is good. I love it. But we've uh, reached one of the most significant points for today, which is a monument and the site of the Battle of Lansdowne in 1643 between the Royalists and the Parliamentarians. We've got this billboard here and this little statue thing. So it says, the field in front of you is the actual field over which the final stage of the Battle of Lansdowne was fought in the English Civil War during the evening of the 5th of July, 1643. The story of the earlier phase, which saw a fierce and bloody battle on the slopes beyond the monument is told in panels one to three, they must be further on, as a result, the parliamentarians were driven out of their earthworks on both sides of the monument and forced to take up a new position behind the long stone wall which runs down to your left. This very stone wall. It says the armies bombarded each other across this field until dusk, legs and arms flying all over the place, wrote one observer. Ah, huh, lovely. And uh, you can see a picture of Sir Ralph Hopton, who's a royalist, and over here, so William Waller is a parliamentary and Okay, and if we go over this stile, past the cool flag thing, which is uh, interesting. Got a big step. <laughs> big step. <laughs> Let's go find the monument. It can't be too far away at all now. Just the other side of this field, I think. 
past another flag. Aha! That looks like a monument there tucked away in the trees. I think, anyway. Yep, this is it. Not quite the viewpoint I was expecting, to be honest with you, but still. Let's uh, take a closer look. The monument was 25 feet tall and made of Ashtar stone masonry in English Baroque style. Check this out. Awesome views over Bristol and uh, just generally everything else. I'm losing track of my surroundings. This is a landscape I'm not too familiar with, but good, it's nice. I'm just seeing the stone. David Waterstone. It does kind of look like a book. Waterstone store. Cotswold Warden, 2004 to 14. Can I have a plaque one day? I've never seen such a sad trick point in my life. Just lost in the hedge. That is, that is sad. Let's go and give it some attention. It's okay, trick point. <laughs> Walking through the golf course right now. Thankfully, not right in the middle. Actually, we kind of are right in the middle. <laughs> Let's just not get hit by anything. Well, I went a long way. <laughs> that is a little bit disturbing. Kind of a metal horse, a dragon and some weird ghost thing. <laughs> As you do. 2016. Huh. The sun has seriously burnt through the clouds. It is hot now. Uh, to be fair, it was forecast to get to about 23, 24, and I am feeling the heat. But otherwise, doing good. Um, heading on towards Prospect Style. Why it's named that, I'm not entirely sure. Have a look when we get there. Um, and then it's basically all downhill into Bath, really. So first of all, it's Western, just the outskirts, and then we'll be in the city itself. Um, trying not to get carried away by visualizing the end just yet because it takes away from the very present here and now um, but also I'm um, feeling a lot of anticipation and excitement so I can't hide or take away from the fact that that is the truth. <laughs> there we go through the gate oh look at that view wow insane With the sun shining bright, I was feeling sunny inside, soon passing Bath Racecourse, shimmering in the heat. Heading on towards Prospect Style, which is a viewpoint now. Let's take a look. Should really be able to see Bath. Oh man, I'm pumped. It's officially happening. Here we go. That is not a bad view. And there is Bath. And that's where we go. Can we see the abbey? Mm, not quite, I don't think. <laughs> Pretty cool we get to walk down into that view. I mean, that is not half bad. <laughs> Whew, this path is half decent, I have to say really quite impressive views over Bath and the surrounding sprawl that makes up its uh, suburbs. It's, it's actually making for a very rewarding finish, I have to say, being able to eye up the final point where we'll end our trail. And I'm just trying to use this time now to process, process the things I've learned on this walk so that uh, I can wrap it up outside Bath Abbey. I am somewhat apprehensive about navigating through the city, but we'll see how we go. Um, apparently we have to follow the golden acorns. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Along the fields of Kelston Round Hill, down Dean Hill and through a playing field into Weston and Tarmac. Here we are then, dropping down into Weston, about to hit Tarmac. And this is it now, I think it's Tarmac all the way into the middle of Bath. Okay, let's cross over. Sweet. Hey, there's a sign, Cotswold Way. That's good, encouraging, because uh, <laughs> easy to get disorientated. It is very well known that I struggle navigating in urban areas, hence why I do feel a little nervous. Um, also, a little anxious about 
that there might be a lot of people, <laughs> especially when we hit the centre. Um, but, well, it's just part of the way this trail ends, so got to do it. Hmm. We appear to be going very much up, <laughs> as you do. No worries. <laughs> Getting closer with every step. Who put this hill here? This is uh, <laughs> a nice heart raising climb. <sighs> Getting there. <laughs> I am actually really interested in Bath as a city. So it is the largest city in Somerset and is designated as a World Heritage Site in 1987. Of course, it has Roman origins. It was built up around the Roman baths um, and sits on the River Avon as well. But there's a lot of key sites. There's some really interesting architecture and historical places as well. So I'm hoping I should have enough time when we get into the city to have a little snoop around at some of the key uh, places to check out. And then, of course, we'll end our trail. And uh, I don't know, it's hot and sunny. Might even get an ice cream. <laughs> Ah, oh, cool. Here's the Royal Crescent, uh, built in the 1700s. A real fine example of Georgian architecture. 30 houses. Wow, that is uh, quite a sight. It felt surreal to be in Bath now, surrounded by elegant properties, traffic noise, people, and an electric energy that was instantly very different to the pace at which I'd been living for the last week. That being said, I enjoyed the walk, passing through the circus, a historical ring of townhouses built in the mid-1700s, and endless streets with cafes, bars and shops galore. Officially using Google Maps to navigate now. Just basically straight line, I think, and then left. Step by step, breath by breath, I made my way onwards to Bath Abbey and the end of the way. When I finally saw it, I was close to tears, with a rush of fulfilment and joy. Although I couldn't quite express this, as I did feel a little shy around all the people. Still, here I was, in the middle of Bath. I had made it. Here we go then, heading up towards the Abbey, Bath Abbey. We have made it 102 miles along the Cotswold Way. And here, just outside the Abbey, you see this? Is the same plaque as in Chipping Camden. So that's where we started our adventure five and a half days ago. We've officially made it. Let's touch the stone as well. I think that just sort of emphasizes the fact that we are officially here. Let's get grounded. Boom, job done. Can't quite believe it actually. Uh, <laughs> it's just sort of ended. The sun is shining and it is a very good feeling to be here. Definitely feeling accomplished but also quite relieved if I'm completely honest with you because lockdown and the whole COVID-19 situation really knocked my security and my abilities um, obviously dealing with injuries as well but a lot of doubts and insecurities got placed upon my shoulders so being able to come out here to do the trail just spend all of this time immersed in nature has been so healing and so fulfilling um, I feel now at the end like i have learnt a lot obviously about the landscape that i've traveled through archaeology flora and fauna but also about myself i feel like i've been rewarded with that security and knowing what i am capable of reminded of the potential that lives within me and actually within all of us when we just choose to commit and that has been my key word for this theme is commitment um consciously committing when you struggle with mental health, you have to choose to get up and face the day every single day. And it can be a very hard decision sometimes. And the same is for the trail, choosing to get up and get out of the tent, choosing to push through those miles, choosing to look after yourself, take the time to take in the landscape that you're walking through. Everything is conscious, it's a choice. And I've really enjoyed how the Cotswold Way has reminded me that actually we do have a lot of choice in our day-to-day -day lives from the mentality that we're taking into different situations that we might be facing to just tackling a trail. So I'm going to ponder that a little bit longer uh, whilst I just wander around Bath and try not to get swept away in the crowds. Also, I'm really just admiring the stonework in this abbey. It's 
very impressive also very sunny <laughs> um, I am feeling a little bit thrown I have to say because um, it's just very busy here and obviously coming from the quiet hills of the Cotswold AONB it's a bit of a contrast but I'm gonna end everything here I want to say thank you so much for journeying with me I hope you've been inspired to get outside and have your own adventures wherever they may be enjoy them and guys until next time you know the drill stay wild I'll see you soon <laughs> And there we have it, another trail under my boots with plenty of happy memories and lessons to reflect on. Job done. And now it was time for an ice cream. Mm -hmm.